Hey everyone, welcome to another Coffee with Kittle episode. I'm here with Sandra D, one of our amazing collaborators, an amazing uh, YouTube guru on like printables and Etsy and design and entrepreneurship and all this crazy stuff. You need to check out her channel down in the description. Uh, but Sandra, we're going to talk today about digital downloads like printables things like that that sell super well but before we dive right into that why don't you just say a little bit about who you are your background what you're doing on youtube uh, and things like that and then and then we'll just dive into the first question yeah sure so first of all thank you so much for having me on coffee with kittle um i'm super excited to be here and i'm so happy that i've discovered kittle uh, it's an amazing platform and i'm definitely starting to use it way more now for my own digital downloads so yeah, I'm Sandra. I have my own YouTube channel. I share a lot of my sort of graphic design tips and digital marketing tips for selling digital products. I started my Etsy shop in 2020, so in the middle of the pandemic. And then I also started my YouTube channel just a few months after that. So everything kind of happened all at once and quite quickly. But um, I actually work full time as well as an engineer. So it started off as kind of like just a creative side hustle. Mm. I was a freelance graphic designer and then I hopped onto YouTube and share tips on that. And I noticed that when I started sharing Etsy videos and making passive income online, a lot of people really gravitated towards that type of content. So that's mainly the content that I share now on my YouTube channel. That's amazing. Your your channel is is phenomenal. I, I, I can't recommend it enough. Please, everyone go subscribe uh, to Sandra, especially if you're in the, the Etsy game. But not only that, there's there's so many other tips and things like that on the channel. So let's just let's dive right in because this is something that we as Kittle maybe haven't dived full full into basically like printables digital downloads things like that i mean we have a couple of tutorials on how to make something but we're not actually discussing like we are right now what are the best things that you could you could sell as a digital download so could you for anyone that doesn't understand what it is i always want to make sure everybody understands what we're talking about can you briefly explain basically define what a digital product like a digital download printable is for etsy for example and then what would be like the most common things that someone would want to have on their site if they're getting started selling digital uh, products? Yeah, so a digital download is basically uh, either it could be a JPEG file, a PDF file, a PNG file, something digital that the customer, when they purchase it, they receive an email that they can download um, the digital file that you have uploaded. So what's great about it is you don't have to send them a physical copy. Let's say you create a digital planner, for example, you would create, let's say, a PDF file, upload it onto Etsy, and then when someone purchases it, they just get a link from Etsy to download that file, and you don't have to worry about creating the physical product, packaging it, or shipping it. And that's why it's called passive income, right? You can sell the same file over and over again. You don't have to worry about inventory or really much of maintaining the product. It just kind of sells over and over again. Um, and then in terms of what you need to kind of get started for your, your Etsy shop for printables, um, I actually have a whole checklist that I can, I can link down below as well for everybody. But basically you do want to have, um, you know, your branding very clear. So you do want, you know, a really nice banner, your logo, um, and then make it clear in the announcement section that these are all digital files. And then I always recommend that in all of your listings, you want to make it very clear that they are digital downloads. When I first started, I made the mistake of not making it very clear in all of my photos. Um, and then I would have customers asking, oh, I still haven't you know, receive the physical product. So just make it super clear in your FAQs, your shop policies and things like that. Yeah. And I noticed now that, um, thankfully, I think it took, I think it took them a little while to do this, but on Etsy, for example, when you, uh, when you post a digital product, you actually like tag it that way in the back end when you publish it. So now there's actually like a little digital sticker or something on the the, the thumbnail or whatever that actually says digital which is nice i don't think that's how it was before but definitely also for the just the keyword just the seo in general it's great to have printable or digital or just both in the title because people will be searching for that maybe they want to print 
uh, posters themselves. We've done that actually. My wife likes to find really nice uh, posters on Etsy, downloads them, and then we print them on our full bleed printer or we go somewhere else and do it. So, you know, and they're a lot cheaper than already having a, you know, going and picking out a big, you know, framed poster or whatever but you make a really good point because if your mock-ups are like just so phenomenal and they're like beautiful frames in the art or whatever and then someone down or someone buys it and thinks they're getting a real poster for like five dollars then you could have an issue so definitely if you're starting out in this game make sure that you're putting digital or printable in the title um so why don't we talk about what kind of digital products sell the best you would say i know you did a couple of videos on this you have one phenomenal video on this two years ago has anything changed that you've seen over the last year or year and a half or so i know you were saying things like planners and wall art and even one thing i thought was really interesting was resumes like resume templates people can design this list them on etsy you know such and such resume template download word document or something download it put it in there they don't have to do any work they just edit it what would you say are like i don't want to just say top selling but what would be the best which ones you know convert the most that you've seen over the last year and a half um so you've actually listed quite a few that i i was talking about previously and they are still like hot selling items on etsy i would say like printable wall art digital planners um digital calendars and things like that but what has changed, I would say, in the last couple of years is competition. There are quite a few niches now that are fairly saturated, especially when it does come to wall art and planners and things like that. And I find it's because they're easier to create. So usually like a printable wall art piece, you know, you, you can create a bunch, you know, in a day and then just kind of post them on Etsy. But what I find now is, and I always recommend doing research in the beginning. I like to do two types of research, um, keyword research. So I'll use like a keyword research tool like Marmalade or Seal Samurai, and then I'll do competitor research. Uh, when you go onto Etsy and you type in a specific keyword, you can see how many results come up. And if you type in printable wall art, it'll be something like over a million results or something like that for just that phrase. So you need to niche down a lot if you want to create a type of wall art. So what I have found is templates is still, it's really, really good. It just depends on the type of templates. So for example, I like, I believe now like business card templates and thank you card templates, they weren't that uh, competitive a couple of years ago, but now a lot of people are starting to do it. So I would say um, if you can get into like, still, I would say resume and cover letter templates specifically are still very low competition compared to all of the other ones. Um, and invoice templates. That was a very interesting one that I found that's still very low mm. competition. Um, and as silly as it sounds, I think it's because they're not as fun to create as like <laughs> all of the you know fun and cute like nursery printables that everyone just like loves to, to make, right? So it's kind of like the, the more like document type of like digital files. Like another one I found recently is uh, bookkeeping spreadsheets. So mm -hmm. that's a really good one too. Like people are now selling like Google Sheets and Google Docs. Um, so that's another big one as well. Yeah, that's that's super interesting that we're we're kind of discovering slash branching into a completely different side of printables because we've talked to collaborators and other you know Etsy and Zazzle people before, and you know they they've been in the game for a while. So things like printable uh journal covers or printable bookmarks or printable you know whatever these things that of course you could you could niche into whatever category i guess um but it it's almost like there's this untapped not fun side of uh these digital products that people don't want to make so like resume like I, I mean yeah i could i could definitely resonate with like not wanting to start from a blank page that sounds absolutely awful so of course you're going to go and either pick one of the stock ones that microsoft word just offers you which are quite not great already so you can go to etsy and find a really nice one but you're also saying like uh, bookkeeping or another one that i thought about yesterday i was like um like a menu like people that are starting like a coffee shop or you know, even a restaurant or a food truck or whatever, they probably also don't want to start from scratch making a menu design and they probably don't have the money to go and like hire an agency or a freelancer, however many, 
however much dollars to make a whole menu design. So that might be another one too that I was thinking about. Um, so like when, when we're saying kind of niche down, which I know is like a word that everyone <laughs> says for, for printable wall art, for example, um, you know, I, of course, over the last year, last two years, I mean, it's so heavily saturated, but how do we like, what would you suggest we where we go to start if we want to do that so let's say someone's gonna someone's gonna probably do that watching this video because one they know it's familiar they know it's easy to create especially in something like kittle and they're gonna do it so obviously they don't want to just put up their you know floral wall art <laughs> because then you have like five million uh search results so how would we take a concept like that and like make it better like what what do people need to know if they're gonna if they really want to dive into wall wall art i know the other ones are kind of untapped but let's pick a specific one like this what would be the steps that you would take in listing something like that yeah um and actually you listed quite a few other ones that truly the list goes on like bookmarks was actually a really really good one that was another mm -hmm. one that i i also found and then digital stickers as well um stickers, but yeah. yeah we can we can definitely talk about other ones afterward but um and print printable activity books that's another one there's truly so many but um yeah so when it comes to wall art to be clear like I don't want people to like kind of shy away from that because they're thinking, oh, it's too competitive. There's no way I'm going to make any sales because when I got into printable wall art, it was still very competitive. Like I got into a very competitive niche mm. um, because I really just wanted to learn from it. And the great thing about Etsy is that the digital marketing strategies you learn from Etsy, you can literally apply it to so many things. Like what I've yeah. learned from Etsy, I've implemented in growing a YouTube channel. Um, but when it comes to printable wall art or any other competitive niche, you want to think about the target audience you're serving. So when I first started, the target audience I was serving, I don't like this term now, but I was thinking of like the like a girl boss, like a, a girl that okay. is working at home, starting, the, starting her business. She wants to kind of decorate her home office. She needs sure. a planner to help her organize. So the more specific you can get, the better, because you want to, you want to stand out. You want to target a very, very specific person that will not only continue to come back to your shop for more, but they might add multiple items to their to their cart when they yeah. check out. Right. And I've had that before where someone will come in and they'll put in like six items in their cart and they'll check out. Wow. Um, but what I would say is the reason it's also important to niche down is if you don't, you're basically competing with all of the other sellers on Etsy that are selling wall art. Like if you just put in florals and then you start also creating nursery printables and then you start creating like boho printables and just very, very random items, then you're competing against everyone. But if you yeah. have a very clear focus, you've narrowed down that competition pool drastically. Um, and then your marketing efforts can also be consistent. So if you are marketing your products on Pinterest, Instagram, through your email list, it's very clear why people are following you and why they want to go yeah. to your shop and favorite your shop and come back for more, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I, I think like what something you're hitting on is a, is a concept we like to call like reverse engineering. You know, we, we love to reverse engineer right whatever the final thing is we do this a lot in youtube so we know what the we want to start with who's actually going to want to search for this right so if we're talking about a poster design you're saying i went all i went all the way back and thought like who would be the ideal person what would their office want to look like for me to then now i've reverse engineered so now i can work backwards back from where i came to say like okay it's probably going to look like this and they're probably going to want a business card template that looks like this and a wall art poster that looks like this and then once you figure those things out then your search gets a lot more refined it's not like you know just floral poster printable or whatever it's like i don't know <laughs> side hustle queen boss poster whatever whatever kind of key key phrase or something right that's like you know what would beyonce do or whatever <laughs> my, my wife yeah. has like a little, <laughs> my, my wife has like a little uh nameplate thing on her desk that says <laughs> what would beyonce do but things oh, like I that, like, that. <laughs> yeah things like that that's like <laughs> where you re reverse engineer first and then it become the goal can become clearer when you can connect the audience with the the product because 
I feel like what a lot of people do, and I even fell into the trap early on setting up a, a Nessie or something is like a lot of the temptation is to like pump out a lot of designs in whatever style. And then you're relying on the style as a keyword, but now you're just competing with everyone else that's put the style. So boho or floral or even words like vintage and retro. Now you need to get more specific, you know? So another question that I have that you, you, you said something and it, and it brought this up. So obviously we've talked a lot, uh, talked already in just 15 minutes about a lot of different kinds of printable products or digital products, something that would be used, uh, edited digitally or something. You're, you're saying that we have this style, this reason that people are following us for whatever the, whatever we're trying to market, right? So the audience is trying to, to follow us. They would come back. They're likely to buy more. They're likely to follow our Etsy shop. They're likely to see when we list a new product or something. So does, does that mean, does that limit you to the style that you're basically setting out so like the the printable bookmarks and the printable wall art and the printable greeting card all have to be the same style or is it okay for creators in their etsy shop to to branch out and say like well i also like to kind of do this as well or is that going to hurt us like what what have you seen because i know that's also a, an interesting topic no matter what it is shirts hats whatever yeah that's such a great question i get it a lot i get a lot of people also asking like can i offer different types of products in my shop like could i offer like you just mentioned i sure. think well, can i offer wall art greeting cards and all that stuff in the same shop and I would never like I would like I wouldn't want people to like pigeonhole themselves and like say like oh mm. no I can only create like these these colors and this aesthetic. Mm. Um, I would always recommend people still test out different types of printables because think of every listing that you put up as a test. Like you want yeah. you want to actually see what's sticking and what isn't right. So you still want to look at trends and but still stick within your niche, right? So still think of that person, like keep that person in mind. Um, typically, our target audience is a mirror of ourselves. So like sure. you know, I was kind of thinking of myself when I created my shop. Um, and I don't always stick to the same style, you know, for everything that I choose to purchase. Um, I do look at trends. I, I continue to do market research because I always want to test out different things because it gets boring, right? Like we don't want to, especially like if you're creative, like you don't want to be pigeonholed, like you want to experiment with different products. Um, and for me specifically, I started off with only printable wall art. Um, okay. And then I had like, I think, one digital planner. And then as I continue to progress, like your shop is always going to evolve. Like what my shop looks like now, it's completely different than what it looked like, you know, a year and a half ago. Gotcha. Um, and it's because as I continue to do research, like market research never stops. Like even yeah. if you have thousands of sales, you still continue to do market research because you always want to come out with new items. Um, but for me, I would continue to look for products that would make sense for my audience, but had lower competition. So I started branching into, um, although I had types of like, um, I had like a daily planner. I ended up trying like a, like a self-care planner because I started like, not pivoting my niche, but kind of adding a little bit more to it. It's interesting because we, we kind of niche down in the beginning, but then we can branch out a little bit. I as see. We I see. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So then, and then I started creating like positive affirmation wall art and positive affirmation cards. And then I noticed that my cards were doing well. Okay. So I started to create more of that. Um, so that's why it's so important to test different things out because sometimes the best seller is never the one you expected to be the best seller, if that makes sense. And like, there were yeah. some pieces of wall art I, I started off with that just, they didn't sell, right? And that's me learning, that's market research. Um, so I always recommend people take a look at the trends, continue to improve your listings and continue to experiment with different styles and just see what's sticking. It's great and reassuring to hear you talk about that as well as some other, you know, uh, some other Etsy fanatics. Like we had Heather Johnson on just a little while ago talking about, you know, retro shirts and all this kind of saying, I asked her the same question, but I think the fear a lot of people would have myself included is like, 
man, I, I don't want to manage five Etsy shops. You know, I don't want to have one Etsy shop that's all digital wall art. I don't want to have one Etsy shop that's just t-shirts. I want to, you know, and you can do collections and things in, in Etsy and you can really refine it to be like, this is my this collection, this is my this collection. But I love the progression of what you're saying with everything is a test. And I think if you think about it that way, if you think about developing this product, whether it's a print on demand or if it's a uh, digital product or something like that, if you think about it as a test and you look at this whole Etsy system as a, you know, a marathon and not, not a sprint, you know, not like I'm going to make these 20 designs today and upload them, which you can do if, if you want to do that, that's fine. But you have to do the research for all 20 of those, you know. So if we look at these as a test, we get to see our shops ebb and flow. So your shop now looks different than it did when you first started out, albeit still in this. It's not like you threw your original audience in mind away. However, you you put something up and you were like, oh, this this hit a sweet spot in what what's either trending or what people are searching for. And then that kind of helps you really hone in. And then we, we start down small and then we go back out. I like how you explained that is like, don't try to do everything at once. Try to understand what you're doing first. And then once you get a little traction, it gives you room to experiment. I think that's like a business model for, for everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you're not going to start a clothing. Yeah, no, and, totally. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to start a clothing and a restaurant and a desk making you know what association all at one time like you know what i mean like you're good you're gonna do yeah. like one thing so I, I i love that um so one one question i have in my mind for a uh, digital downloads or printables um is the concept of customization now i know that customization is such a big like personalized items it's such a big part of etsy that's why a lot of people go on there we just did a tutorial like a week or two ago about personalized baby shower gifts or whatever like how easy it is to go and kittle and make like a personalized or custom uh, baby shower gift like whatever it is a bib or a blanket or whatever that's just one example um, but in the digital space so print printable whatever would you recommend having some customizable things so for example a wall out wall art of a quote that you could customize i know that that's a lot more work but i'm asking if is that something that you offer and or suggest doing knowing that customization is such a big part of the search results in etsy 100 percent um i'm so <laughs> glad you asked me because when i first started i actually had a whole section dedicated to customized mm. wall art specifically and for like the first uh, I would say like few months I was getting like most of my sales were coming from the custom like a uh, wall art and it was it wasn't difficult like I literally like my and honestly I was actually surprised I was getting a lot of them because you know I was thinking oh this is actually competitive there's quite a few people that are just posting something like your quote here and then someone would tell them what the uh, quote would be right. um so I would just kind of, I had, I had a couple of different ones. I had one where there was like a watercolor behind it. And then I would put like your quote here. And then I would give them a couple of options on the type of font, uh, to decide on. And then even the color of the watercolor. Um, okay. and then I also had like a three piece one where it was like that script font. And I had quite a few sales with that. And like you mentioned, Etsy is known to be kind of like, um, you know, people go on there to find something unique or something oh, that yes. they can give to someone else yeah. exactly and most of them were like a like a gift you know like they would because I, I you would also have conversations with these people right that that purchase sure. your wall art and they'll say like oh my gosh my daughter will love this or something like that yeah. um and i was doing it for a while uh i've actually <laughs> i've actually um put like unlisted those for now because <laughs> i was just getting so busy <laughs> so 100 percent like at, when you are starting I recommend having a custom section. If you can handle it, then definitely have that because what's great about that too is, like I mentioned, you have these conversations with these people that are most likely going to favorite your shop. They yeah. often come back for more, for whether more. it's customized or they actually check out your other, the other sections of your yeah. shop. And you have a better chance at receiving a five-star review, right? Sure. 
Sure. So it helps you build that momentum in the beginning to get those sales, to get those reviews. And then if you choose not to have that section, you know, like, you know, the whole year or whatever, like maybe you want to unlist it for a while, you can totally do that. But it's highly beneficial for your shop because not everyone does that, because like you mentioned, it does take time. That's not passive income but it is a great way to get that momentum going. Yeah, so I mean, you know what the next the next question basically is is how do we how do we make this sustainable? Like, you know, so do you do you have a plan? Maybe it'll help people to understand if it do you have a plan for relisting those? I mean, you have a full-time job and you're doing this on the side. One of our other amazing collaborators, Detour Shirts, Juna also works a full-time job and does and does youtube and sells amazon merchandise i don't know you, you guys are all super <laughs> human youtuber whatever i mean i still have my little baby channel i do every once in a while on the side but like so how do we make how do we make the customizable stuff like sustainable at, at your level you know doing doing the customizable stuff i know has got to take time because tomorrow you could relist that and then in two days you've got five and even five sounds like enough of a of a process where you have to take a day to message all those people and make sure like you said you're even giving different font choices that's probably more mm -hmm. than i would i would probably do but <laughs> like you know how do we make that sustainable it's probably easy at first but you know i'm even thinking of julian who uh, i interviewed uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago about how he's about to become a bestseller on etsy for his customizable uh uh, cookbook, you know, recipe books or whatever, cool. uh, which is really, really amazing to see. Julian handles our customer support over in the Discord, so everyone join the Discord. Um, but I mean, yeah, he just just posted customizable recipe book, and now it's it's every day he's doing a order, talking with a customer, which is great because he's walking him th walking them through the whole process. So their journey is amazing. They get excellent customer support they feel like they're being heard and this is all the same kind of stuff you can do with the printable stuff so what's your plan for making this sustainable like how do we scale with this yeah um there it's gonna look different for everyone because it really does depend on how many things you're juggling in your business whether you have a full-time job or whatever it may be but what you could do there's a there's a couple of things you can turn them into templates that's also an option too where you can start selling templates and um basically when someone purchases it they get access to that template and then they can just edit it so if you have like a piece of wall art that says you know like your quote here and then you've included some graphics or whatever it may be they'll they can have access to all of that similar to like like a wedding invitation template you don't actually mm. have to create it from scratch for each person they're able to just customize it themselves um so that doesn't work for people that you know like customers that don't want to do anything they just yeah want to they don't want it. any hassle yeah. yeah yes yeah so i mean the other option too is you can choose when to unlist them and certain times of the year so oh, if you are yeah. hoping to kind of have you know um a lot of revenue coming in during certain times of the year like let's say whether it's christmas or mm -hmm. um during valentine's day or mother's day or things like that and you're willing to put in that time for some extra uh revenue then maybe those are you know good options for you um the other thing is you can also just unlist a couple of them so maybe focus on a couple of just your best sellers okay. um and then just leave the other ones um the other thing too kind of like a side pro tip that i started doing in the beginning was when someone would ask me for uh like a custom you know they'd ask me exactly how they want it and all that as long as it didn't include like a like a copyright quote or like you know somebody else's name or whatever i would actually create it and post it on my um in my shop as just like a passive income, like printable, because I'm thinking, you know, this person's in my target audience. They wanted something like this. Okay. Maybe some other people would, and that actually made sales. Um, so that's wow. another idea too. But yeah, I would say, again, it's going to look different for everybody, but maybe just certain times of the year you're willing to put in more. Um, the other uh, idea is let's say you're, the sales are slow during certain times of the month and you want to increase the sales. That might be a good time to unlist them. Or sorry to list them again gotcha and so you know that there's so there's a lot of things we can try um especially playing with the unlisting and listing during certain types of the year but is there like a is there like a magic number in your head 
where you would where you feel like you would get to the point like if someone's just trying to go at this full time or something you feel like there's a number where at some point you're like okay i gotta go to fiverr and i gotta i gotta give somebody the reins to just customize these templates all day is there is there like something is that even a possibility like you would want to scale or someone could scale to that magnitude where basically they have to have help yeah no i mean that's a great point too like to get help i just personally have not like from my experience sure. i have not hired anybody just because I think for me, and I, I think a lot of people can relate, it's hard to kind of give that creative work to someone when you yeah. enjoy it. It's not good. Like definitely ask for some help when you need it. But that is a great idea. I wouldn't say there's like a specific number. It really does depend on your income goals, right? So if you have a specific like, you know, I want to make this much money per month. And when I take these off, it's hurting my sales kind of work out how much you would have to pay someone else to do it. Because yeah. of course, when you're hiring someone else, they can do it quicker than you. Um, so you're saving a lot of time and it's not eating too much into your revenue. Um, so I wouldn't say there, it, it's going to, again, look different for everybody depending on their goals, really. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, you know, unless, unless you're, I don't know, some kind of crazy, amazing wizard and can sell digital you know, printable wall art for $50. I don't know when that re revenue will get to the point where you probably need to, to hire someone. So if anyone was thinking like, man, I'm just going to go to Fiverr and pay somebody $5 a, a, a design to do this for me. I mean, you, you've got your Etsy listing fees, then you, which I know are nominal, but then you've got the transaction fee. And then you, I mean, at the end of the day, you actually kind of, if you're selling a printable card for like $3, I think you make like maybe a dollar or something so like like i i don't know what it is but you kind of have to keep that in mind right yeah no and that's a great point and i'll actually just um mention the one like you made a really good point like a printable you can't really charge that much for it depending on yeah. what you're selling but if you do want to increase the revenue you could always do a bundle of printables okay. so and the, this is going to be have, my last question anyway so this is perfect we're talking about i was going to talk about price anyway so this is perfect segue oh great okay well, perfect <laughs> so um when it comes to pricing your items i always recommend looking at a bunch of your competitors but you don't want to charge too low or too high mm -hmm. you want to be somewhere okay. in the middle but if you do want to figure out ways to increase your revenue then definitely bundle your best like your best sellers together okay. so what i did was i started creating three piece bundles even six piece bundles for for like almost twenty dollars, okay. and th that's when my revenue started to increase every single month, right? Um, and I would even look at certain like um, like sales that I've had and try to figure out what people bundle themselves. Like they'll sometimes purchase two items, and if I saw patterns, then I would try to create a bundle of those two items and, and increase, you know, the price of course by a little bit. Um, so that's a way that you can increase it. The other thing too is if if you do decide to create templates, spreadsheets, and things like that, usually those, because it's a tool, um, usually people are able to charge more. Like I can see people charging templates for let's say $20 or so oh, versus wow. one printable for like three or $4. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I've seen just from doing a little research, you know, typing in a couple different search results on Etsy. I mean, it's really all over the place. We've, we've got some beautiful um, printable wall art from an artist on Etsy. And I think the download was $5, you know, for, for mm -hmm. one. So I got, we got two for 10 or whatever. And I think they're like 12 by um, 12 by 14 or something, uh, not a massive print, but like pretty nice, but I've seen it all over the place, like $5, $7, $12 for printable wall art. And then in the cards, I was doing some research and watching some other YouTubers just to kind of put some notes together on price. I mean, I've seen people selling cards for like a dollar and fifty cents, which I don't know how they make any money on that, or three dollars. But I haven't really seen any like like greeting cards, printable greeting cards and stuff go past three dollars. You know, because I feel like, and maybe you could speak into just selling stuff individually. I feel like at a certain point, they're like, you know what? I'll just go to the store and buy a card for three dollars, as opposed to like going on Etsy, downloading it, then I got to figure out how to print it. What if it's not right? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I haven't seen many go past the $3 mark. So 
yeah, I don't know what, what, what your experience has been in that, but, or what advice you'd have for things like that. Yeah. And definitely that comes down to research before you even get started, make sure you understand roughly how much you can charge before it just becomes too high. And you're probably not going to really make sales. Um, there are certain like, your like greeting cards, same thing. When I do my research, you can't really charge that much for it. So yeah. you have to kind of be okay with that. Um, but I mean, it, it's true. A lot of people can just go to the store and just buy something, uh, you know, for, for even cheaper, but sure. you know, we'll, we'll keep like Etsy still is, you know, that unique like marketplace where people can find something that they're not going to find at the store. So that's why we're still able to charge like a, you know, like a kind of a fair amount. Um, but definitely even bundling things like even greeting cards. Like if I were to think about creating greeting cards, I would probably offer a couple of different sizes. I would try okay. to make it somewhat unique. Of course, if you can customize it, you can definitely charge more, of, of course. Sure. Um, but yeah, it, it comes down to how much they're getting from that listing. But what I would say also is when you get started, try to start on the lower end when you are yeah. charging. But as you get the sales and reviews, you can start increasing your price a little bit more over time. And another little pro tip here when you are just starting your shop you want to launch it with a sale so you mm. can even try to charge a little bit more but then put like Market, a 20 yeah. sale yeah. or whatever it may be because yeah because people can also filter uh items for sale like yeah. buyers and then you'll also show up within that algorithm so um definitely launch with a sale um, so yeah, that's another kind of little pro tip, but yeah, you can always increase the price over time. You just really, really want to get that momentum going with some sales and reviews. Yeah. And, and something you just mentioned sparked like a, another question I had that I totally forgot about, about the digital download. You, you, you mentioned, you know, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell this digital. So it's a card or, or a poster or whatever, you know, you could definitely charge maybe a little bit more if you're if you have different sizes in it. So that was a question that I forgot to ask you. Have you I mean, so if you're going to do wall art is is the best common practice. I, I don't actually have any like I have a small Etsy shop just to kind of keep up with the times and know what the back end and stuff looks like. But I haven't listed any uh, digital wall art or anything. Is it best practice to do like, you know, uh, so in this you're going to get 12 by 12 by 14 and 20 by 36 and what like is it are we just giving all of the sizes or are we pricing those at different points like like i, I just don't want i wouldn't want anyone to complain like yo this is not like big enough like you know what i mean because i don't know what size they're gonna print it at or do we just put that in the product listing like it's 12 by 16 like that's what it is so this is actually something i get a lot in terms of what sizes should i offer and mm -hmm. when i first started i think i offered like two or three sizes to start and i noticed that i was getting a lot of people contacting me asking can i get it in this size can i get it in this size and I was like, okay, I want to try to cover multiple sizes somehow. And I started looking at other competitors that were getting multiple sales and I wanted to see what they were offering. And I noticed that they were offering like maybe like five different sizes. So then that's when I got into the whole ratio sizing basically. And I explained it in a couple of my videos where I actually have, so I have five files in every single one of my printable wall art listings. Okay. So I do offer everything within one listing. And I think that's why I'm able to charge a little bit more for one okay piece of printable wall art because I offer all these files. And then I also have an instructions sheet because okay. that's another thing too. A lot of people are asking me, how do I print this? How do I scale it up and down? So I have an instructions sheet that will walk customers through exactly how to print. Um, but I will offer like a five by seven inch, 11 by 14 inch, and then I'll have three files that are ratio sizes. So I've got the four by five ratio and I save that in a 16 by 20 inch. So okay. basically, and then they can size it down from there. Um, so to answer your question, I do recommend just including all of the sizes in one uh, listing because you are able to charge a little bit more um, and uh, people can kind of choose what they what they want to print, right? Because now, like, I never get messages anymore asking, can I get it in like, you know, 11 Perfect. by 14 or like, yeah. 20 by 30 or whatever. So yeah, I feel like people are willing to pay a little bit extra to get multiple sizes and have their choice. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. I, I was thinking the same thing just because if you're going to post a card, you know, I have no idea if someone wants five by seven, six by four, like I just, I, I have one card on there 
of something that I made in, in Kittle. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to put, I made it actually for my dad, but I was like, this is kind of cool. I'm going to put it on, I'm going to put it on Etsy. It says like old soul and it's like, you know, from old Coot studios or something like that. It's very retro, but I was like, I'm just going to do like six different sizes. Cause there's like a million card sizes, like depending on where you live in the world, I guess. So I was like, it's someone's going to message me and be like, can I get this in a one by two or some silly whatever. So I just, gave, I just gave all of the 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 options in there so it, it's it's reassuring to hear you say that and also just good practice to include a guide like hey you actually because some users may not know like you tell them like hey you have everything you need open up this document i'm going to show you how you would print this that's such a good uh, a good practice to have. When we offer multiple sizes, it can get a little bit confusing for the customer. So not only do I include an instructions sheet, but I also clarify it within the listing images and the description. Okay. So within your images, you just want to clarify exactly what they're receiving. Um, and of course that helps with conversion rate as well when they know, but yeah, you just want to be super, super clear. Yeah. I just wanted to add that in. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, no, that, that makes that makes total sense, especially to yeah, in the listing description and, and you're mentioning in the photos, that's even better. I, I did the same thing I showed like uh in the the car that I'm talking about, like this slide thumbnail has four by six on it, and then when you swipe it has five by seven and then it basically it shows you all of the what they're gonna get, which mm -hmm. for the viewer, you're like, Oh, perfect. They've got five by seven, I've already got card stock for that, whatever. It's it's perfect. Um, so the last thing, just the very last thing I'm going to ask you, cause we got to, I, I, I want to loop Kittle back into this. Cause I think there's just so much untapped power that users are not sure about how they can use Kittle to make these, you know, printable products. Like how do, do you see, you know, Kittle being one of the, the powerhouses for printable products? And what would you, what would you recommend to someone right now? Like, Hey, Go open up Kittle. These are the three printable products that you can knock out like like this, you know, this ready to go. So what 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 would you say? Like how would you see Kittle being hand in hand with these kind of printable Etsy products? Yeah, I mean, I I'm not just saying this. I absolutely love Kittle and I feel <laughs> like it actually has answered a lot like based like a lot of people's concerns. So Okay. There's you can literally create any type of printable in Kittle. I've already tested it. So I've created printable wall art. I've created coloring pages, which I've mm. never created coloring pages before, but it was so easy to do yes. in Kittle. Yes. Um, I created printable bookmarks following your tutorial, which was really, really helpful. Nice. Um, yeah. So, and then I've just started creating stickers and then I'm just, I'm going to be playing with printable planners and calendars next. So I've got all of these ideas, but what I absolutely love about Kittle is, and what I mean by like, my audience's concerns is one thing is when you want to download high quality digital downloads, that's like soup. That's like number one priority when it comes to offering digital downloads, you want to make sure it's high quality. And if you want to offer like a JPEG file, for example, you have the ability to increase the resolution. So the yeah. fact that we have DPI control, we can save it at 300 DPI. We have no concerns about the quality on the customers and they'll be super happy. That's amazing. Um, and then the other thing too is the licensing terms are very, very clear. Like it's very clear Good. what we're allowed to do and not do when it comes to Good. Kittle fonts and graphics. And that's really, really beneficial for a lot of people, especially if they're just getting started and they don't want to get in trouble. They don't want to be using things that they're not yeah. allowed to use or, you know, um, kind of like use it the wrong way. Sure. And then the other thing too, that I've noticed is that there are so many advanced editing features that Kittle has. I especially love the way that you can edit the fonts and I like, I'm an Adobe illustrator user. Like I've used sure. Adobe illustrator for years now. And yeah. I honestly have found like, I just, I haven't needed to use it for a while. Um, or because <laughs> now everything that I've wanted to do, yeah, everything I've wanted to do with the text, I'm pretty much able to do in Kittle. So uh, that's, a you know, the fact that we're able to customize it so much and kind of make our printables more unique and stand out from a lot of the other competitors. That's, it's amazing. Um, and it's super easy to use. That's another thing too. Like when I talk about Illustrator and Photoshop, it sounds kind of overwhelming and daunting, but with Kittle, it's actually very, very easy to use. Like I always recommend people yeah. just go in, play around with the features and you'll get the hang of it very, very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so great to hear you say that. And, you know, and, and I say this multiple in multiple videos, you know, we're not trying to 
to harp or throw shade on Adobe products. They're amazing. We still use them, but you know, I, we're not trying to say like, you know, forget those and, you know, only use Kittle. We want you to use Kittle, but you actually use them hand in hand. You know, if there's something that you can't do for whatever reason yeah. and you need to drop it into uh, Illustrator, you can do that. So I always want to make sure everybody knows we're not just trying to throw shade on Illustrator, but it's, I, I also, as a user, as someone that was a freelance designer for so many years, you know, just use an illustrator. I actually don't use it that often. And I mean, obviously I work for Kittle, so I'm in it all day long, but there are still some side projects where I'm like, oh, I could do this in illustrator or I can just do it in Kittle and then I can share the project link with whatever <laughs> client and then we're good to go. Yeah. So that that's amazing. And, and, and so happy to hear you say that. And so glad that you are utilizing Kittle this way and that your viewers, your you know, the people coming and using it and watching you and your tutorials are are getting clear answers. And it's also important to us that you know how to answer them as well, which is which is great. We want to make sure our licensing is clear enough. Uh, very. We just have a do's list and a don'ts list. You know, that's like the easiest concept, like do this, don't do this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so this is this has been amazing, uh, Sandra. I know people are going to get so much value out of this. Uh, maybe they'll even go back and replay and watch something that they weren't clear on. I hope I hope you do. Um, Sandra, is there anything that you want to tell us, anything that's going on, anything you want to point people to, like a specific uh, a specific download list or a checklist or a video or something? I give you full reign to tell us whatever's going on, uh, and, then, and then we'll sign off here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything that's happening will be on my channel, so you can definitely just come and follow my channel. I've got many, many tutorials coming up very soon on kind of how to stand out on Etsy and mm. specifically how to use Kittle to create printables. Um, truly, it has actually motivated me to create new products, which I'll be sharing on my channel. Um, and then, like I mentioned, I will also um, provide the checklist for it's it's mm. helpful for any new Etsy seller coming in, creating a new printables shop. So I will provide that as well. But yeah, everything will be on my channel. So you can uh, check that out. Perfect. Well. You guys know where to go. Check it out down in the description. Sandra, thank you so much for joining me for this episode. Everyone, don't forget to subscribe uh, to the Kittle YouTube channel. If you haven't already, it'll just take you one second. Uh, like this video, share it if there's someone that's in this space that you think would get benefit from it. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.